In this video, you'll learn how to set up a unit price prime contract. Remember that the import template for a unit price contract differs from the other three types, so be sure to review the video on the unit price spreadsheet template before proceeding with this one. In an earlier video, we used the add project wizard, and the first eight steps of that wizard involved setting up just the project. Had we continued on to step 9, that would have taken us into setting up a prime contract, and the steps I'm going to show you now are exactly the same as the ones you would have seen starting at step 9. From the project homepage, click Contract Administration, and then click Start Now. Step 1 has you identify the client company and contact. Step 2 lets you indicate the source of the cost codes, and I'm going to do this by importing from an Excel spreadsheet. In Step 3, select Unit Price with Build Quantities as the contract type, and select Approved for the status. Project Financial and Analytic Reports only include prime contracts with approved status, not pending. Notice that a three-digit number is automatically assigned. You can configure how contracts are numbered in settings, and at the end of this lesson I'll show you exactly how to do that. Compare the contract issue date and the status date. The status date cannot be earlier than the issue date, but the approved status date does need to be earlier than the date on any transactions for the job. In other words, you can't create transactions related to a contract until it's been approved. Step 4 is where you select the import spreadsheet. Notice this checkbox, Create Cost and Revenue Items with Non-Zero Subtotals Only. If the spreadsheet has $0 cost codes, you can clear this checkbox to include those cost codes in the contract. You would just need to come back in later and add amounts to those cost codes in order to be able to invoice against them. Click Finish, and that's all the information you need for the Unit Price Prime contract. There are a couple of areas you'll want to establish for each contract that aren't handled by the Contract Setup Wizard. The first is your default markups for Change Proposal Requests, CPRs, and Change Orders, COs. Click that link, and then click Add and add a default markup. The order number determines the order in which markups are calculated. For example, if you apply a profit markup first and a sales tax second, and you select Include Previous for the sales tax, the sales tax will be calculated on the total change order quantity including your profit. The markup type lets you indicate whether this is a percentage markup, a lump sum markup, or a margin markup. Percentage and margin markups are both based on a percentage, but the calculation is slightly different. A percentage markup means the percentage you enter will be tacked onto the total cost, so a $100,000 change order with a 10% markup will be $110,000. A margin markup means that the markup amount will be 10% of the total, so the calculation is the total for the change order divided by 1 minus the margin percentage. For a $100,000 change order with 10% margin, the total is $111,111. The help topic for markups explains the difference in the calculations. You can always change the markups on specific RFPs and change orders, but if you have standard markups that apply to most changes it's useful to set them up here. And don't worry, we'll talk about CPRs and change orders in detail in an upcoming lesson. Finally, in the Prime Contract Overview page, click Edit. Remember to enter information for the areas that aren't handled during the wizard. The Prime Contract Address. If different from the project owner's billing address. Scopes of work, inclusions, exclusions, and clarifications. Estimated start and finish dates. and retainage percentages.
Once the prime contract is ready, you have several options for exporting, linking, and emailing it. Go to Reports, Prime Contract Details. We'll use the default template for this example, but you can upload customized report templates and settings to use here. I'll explain more about that in the video on Prime Contract Settings. Notice that you have several export options. You can save this as a doc or PDF file, you can save it as a linked file, or you can email it as an attachment if you want to send it to the project owner from here. I'll save the PDF as a linked file, so you can see how that looks. When the report is created, scroll to the linked files area, and you'll see the document. Let's rename it so we know which file this is. Just click the link to open the details and enter the new name. The Actions button for the file lets you download, view, unlink, or delete the file. Let's view it. The report shows the complete contract with item details at the end. And again, you can customize your report formats and upload them in settings to be available here. Now we can send the report to the owner. Click Reports, Prime Contract Details, and this time, for the Export option, I'll select Email PDF, and that gives me another dropdown to select the email template. Just as with customized reports, you can upload customized email templates, but we'll use the default for now. Click OK, and this opens the Email Prime Contract window. You can modify the recipients and CC lists, verify that the contract will be attached, and scroll down to see the email that will be sent. Click Send Email. When the email is sent, Scroll down in the Prime Contract window to see it recorded in the Send Emails area. In this video, you learned how to create a unit price contract.